Good morning, folks. We've got a look at the sun and top science news hitting the atmosphere, molecular clouds in nearby space, and a couple relevant to the disaster cycle of our planet. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun pretty quiet. No major flares or Earth-directed eruptions, but we are having an eruption alert ongoing this morning. The plasma filament ripping away over the top left is beginning to destabilize the large thin filament facing Earth. We've watched it for two days, but this morning it is lifting. Eyes on the central Earth-facing filament as it's going to go. Let's get right to an easy article up first. Forever plastic? Better be locked in soil or under the water, because if it can see the sun, the breakdown energy can see it. Impressive study showing how fragmentation into microplastics is not the whole story, but the breakdown of those chemicals into others, which turns us on to a different but equally important future examination. Climate fail up next. Wouldn't be a week in the modern science world without one of these papers. Here they are missing the high tail of the convective atmospheric potential energy, CAPE, which means that their models are not only missing the most severe weather forecasts, but they're missing the key details of what's going into those forecasts. Little eye candy here as we look at the closest molecular clouds to our solar system. In the rectangular projection, the edges of the frame are actually behind us from the galactic center. And these molecular clouds are remnants of NOVA, faces of their shockwave interactions with the surrounding medium. And speaking of NOVA, another nod here at the uncertainties to which they clutch as if they were set in stone. Tiny tweaks at levels like this affect the framework of the entire cosmos and do so back and forth across the entire timeline. Up next, okay, I'm not going to lie. I have no idea what this is, and I'm putting it in the news to see if maybe someone can help us out and give us a simple answer that we, the Weather Channel, and indeed everyone else in the world so far, hasn't figured out. This was China a couple days ago, and I can't even tell if it's something up at the top of a building that's tilted slightly off kilter, or if that's a projection effect below it from the brightness. Either way, this time, I'm asking you. Up next, we're at the MMS mission studying the magnetosphere and what anomalous layer was there a few years ago. And they're calling it anomalous should give you a clue as to their certainty as well. I expect continued reporting of these types of anomalies as Earth's field continues to change in the modern magnetic excursion. And so, let's look down the line into the crystal ball of this planetary magnetic failure. Folks, this is an excellent way to do it. Model a scaled-up version of what the world saw clearly after the last nuclear bombs went off in the world. Scaling up that forcing, they are examining the effects of nuclear war, but also they're indirectly examining the effects of the magnetic change on Earth in terms of the ozone and surface radiation exposure. If you'll recall, it was just a week ago that we went over the story of how modern ozone observations only make sense when they actually include the most incredible blasts from the sun and those solar protons are having an easier time by the day of breaking through and destroying that ozone. The march down the line of the magnetic excursion continues. We greatly appreciate your support. Eyes on that plasma filament on the sun. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.